So my name is Patrick and I work at uh, Texas Instrument Canada. So today I'm going to demo a uh, co-composer studio that's coming up for within TI. So what you see here is our getting started page. This is a page that uh, by default when you open co-composer studio. So this is a welcome page. So once you plug in the device, if you have a launch pad device and you plug it in, this is what it will show on the getting started page. It will show your board what you have con uh, what is connected and also what kind of uh, things you can do on the uh, right hand side so you can for a new user the new user most likely will come in and try to uh, browse some example or create a new example project so i will just walk through that flow in this demo so i'll create a new project so once you click on the uh that link or that action it will open up a new window so it will list all the example projects that's available for the device that you have connected to your PC. So you can browse through the example, and then once you select an example, and then it will provide you an option to select one comp what compiler you want to use and what the kernel you want to use. Once you select that uh, those options, you can just hit the uh, Create buttons. Um, since I already have a project uh, created or imported into my uh, uh, IDE, I'll just uh, skip that step for now. So I'll just close this window and open up this uh, uh, Explore view. At this point, I can quickly just close this getting started uh, windows for now, so I don't need it because I close it. And I have this project imported. So let me just uh, start debugging uh, uh, this project as a new user. So I will either go to run and hit this uh, option here, this menu option, it will start building the project and then flashing or loading the project onto my device. And then we will, it will put you into a, a debug uh, mode. As you can see, I'm already at the, the main function. So I can set breakpoint in here in this file, or I can go to run and set up a, a different type of uh, breakpoints here. We do have watch point, you can set a watch point. So if you enter a location where you want the program to hold or stop, you can just type in that location. So I, I won't do that for this demo purpose. So I, I can just run the program. And I will demonstrate some of the views that we have implemented or integrated into a theta. So I will open up the, uh, the memory view. As you can see here at the bottom, we have a memory view. and I can enter a location that where I want to uh, view the memory and we have different type of formats that you can select to change the, uh, the value in the, in the view. And additionally, I'll open a few more views that uh, we can demonstrate. So for example, we have register views. So you open up this view, it will show you up, show up the, uh, the core register or the peripheral register on the left-hand side. And if you have bit field, for a specific register, there is a, a, a subgroup that you can expand and show. And also, we do have disassembly view. So if you open the disassembly view, you can either type in a location within the disassembly view, or you, you select your call stack, the disassembly view will follow the, uh, the call stack. And also, I'll show a few more additional views that we have. Uh, for example, the uh, 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 RTOS view, this is a real-time object view. So for example, if, you, if your application is using RTOS, you can, a free RTOS, you can open up this view and show different uh, modules that we, you have on your, on your uh, applications. So I'm gonna run and I hold, you can see this view is updated. I would like to also show demonstrate uh, some other views such as uh, stack users view. So this is based on your program. What uh, what program you have selected in your workspace? It will it will update this view to uh, display the information accordingly. And also there is a 
a memory, uh, what you call it, a, a modules view. So this let me go you to show what uh, what functions or what uh, global variable you have loaded onto your current debug uh, sessions. So those are the general views that we have added to the uh, CCS uh, and Theia. And the next thing I'd like to show you is a, a multi-core debugging. So I will open up uh, the threads view and I will basically show all the available cores for this device. So we have different cores that you can select. Once you select the core, the, the, uh, the view will update. But the main interesting thing I like to show is be able to uh, pin and clone a certain views in the uh, for, for multi-core debugging. For example, if I have this memory view open, I can I can open the view view. So I can pop oh, up, and then I can. It seems to be something. Like is, is someone's not not me? Okay, okay. Well, I'm moving, well, I'm moving on. on. So in this view, your first call 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 zero zero, and you can see that that in the two this four four, select the other four four. I type in zero zero. You can see that the in the in the first call call, the second view call you call in my my in 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 the transcript view. So that's really useful for enable people to debug multi call for a TI device. So um, what other things I can demonstrate? Um, we do have, well, basically for, for all the debug views that we implemented, we do have a capability of pinning and cloning them and also be able to refresh the view while the target is running. So we added additional features to, to be able to continuously refresh each of those debug views. And we also extended the, uh, the, the watch view from there, be able to also pin a certain variable in, in the watch. So for a certain expression that you enter, you can hit the pin button. You can select this uh, pin to core. Where is my pin? Pin expression. So based on the current selected uh, debug core, you can select, right click and say pin to this core. And you can see in the watch view, an expression can be pinned to a specific core within the, 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 uh, the threads view. And for breakpoints, we did we did the enhance the Theia core to be able to create any custom breakpoints. So, for example, as you can see in my uh, previous uh, option here for adding breakpoint, sorry, I'll go to here and set a new breakpoint. This is a custom dialog that we added to be able to set any type of breakpoint. So, we, TI has a a different type of uh, hardware breakpoint that can be uh, enabled for a specific core. So we have this capability of customizing breakpoints or create a new breakpoint within the say IDE. And once your breakpoint is added, we you can open up the properties and you can specify what option should be available for for, for that breakpoint. So I think I am. Am I good with time? I'm at uh, 10 minutes into the uh, demo. OK, so I'll keep going for another few minutes uh, to demonstrate what other things we have. We do have a uh, trace as well. So for this debug, uh, for this call, you can enable trace. So we have a core trace and energy trace. Once I enable this option and then I run the program, And let it run for a bit and then at hold or stop the debug session or pause the debug session. I should be able to collect some trace data based on the, the true execution point. Yeah, so this kind of wrap up my demo, what I like to demonstrate for uh, uh, TI's integration with Theia. I do point out that we do have a, a product that works offline, what I'm currently demo, demoing, and also a, a, the product that runs in the cloud. So if I quickly bring up my windows here, you, you, can, you can see that 
uh, I, I, we do have a, a Theta running online as well. I, I have this window open for a while, so it's timed out while I'm speaking. So you, you can see that we do have the, the IDs that can run online and offline using uh, Theta. Okay, um, thanks for listening to me. I, I think that wraps up my demo for this session. Thank you so much for that excellent presentation. We do have some questions in the chat for you. I'll pop it up on the screen. So is Code Composer Studio based on CDT Cloud? No, it's not based on CDT Cloud, but it does use CDT in the back end to uh, perform project uh, build. Perfect. And then the next question we have, it seems you did some extensions and improvements to the FAIA framework. Did you consider contributing those to upstream where applicable? Yes, absolutely. It's just that we don't have the bandwidth right now. We do have plans to contribute those into FAIA code base. Amazing. Well, that is all the questions that we have for you today, Patrick. Thank you for your time.